The silent partner in any great photograph is the quality and the amount of light that's included in the scene. Most photographers will understand that there's a direct relationship between the amount of light in the scene and the types of settings you can use on your camera. On a recent trip to France, I found myself late in the afternoon visiting a local cemetery of a small village, just out of interest to see what it was like. I took a few photos, you can see them here, and I'll just flick through a couple of them. And these types of images, the close-up images, are working quite well. Notice that the background has dropped out of focus, but the core detail is nice and sharp. But if we look at the camera data in the properties pane, and remember you can always display the camera data for the images that you're viewing in the organizer space, by just going up to window and down to properties and displaying the properties pane, and then just click on the blue eye button that you can see here for extra information and that will display things like the camera make and model, the ISO speed that you are using and also important details like exposure time and f-stop. Now for us I'd like to concentrate on just what's happening with our f-stop with these several images. Because the light was so low I was using quite a small f-stop number so f3.5 at this point and that will give me good detail for the subject that I'm focusing on with the background dropping out of focus. This is great if you want to concentrate your viewers attention on the subject that you're photographing but can be a problem if you're trying to get the sharpness running throughout the image. So these detail photographs are working quite well but look what happens when I try to get more of an overview of the cemetery. Here you can see that the first cross is actually quite sharp and the other crosses are blurred. If I change my focus to the second cross in, you can see that the first cross is now blurred and the last cross in the background is blurred as well. This is because with the amount of light that I had available, I could only use quite small aperture numbers in order to take the photos. And using a small aperture number will give me a shallow depth of field. Let's have a look at another example. So shooting through some iron railings that you can see here, the railings themselves are sharp, but the cross in the background is blurred. If I go to the next shot where I focused on the cross you can see that the railings now are blurred and the cross in the background is sharp. So for those of you who are unaware of how depth of field works here are the three key factors that photographers used to control how much of their images are sharp and this is called depth of field. The first is the aperture. So if we use a small aperture number like f2.8, well then only one part of the image, the subject that we're focusing on, will be sharp. If we use a high aperture number, like f22, then much more of the image will be sharp. But remember if we're photographing in low light, using a high aperture number like f22 will mean that we have a much longer exposure time. The second thing that controls depth of field is the focal length of your lens. So the longer the focal length of your lens, the longer the zoom, the shallower the depth of field. So if I was photographing with a 300 millimeter lens, then my depth of field will be much shallower than if I'm photographing with a wide angle lens like a 28 millimeter. And the final characteristic that controls how much of our image appears sharp is the distance the camera is to the subject. So the closer you are to the subject, the shallower the depth of field or zone of sharpness will be. So that's just a recap on the different controls that we have for depth of field. But what if we want to actually combine the sharp areas of this image and the sharp areas of this image together to create a photo with much more sharpness throughout the whole image? Well I'm happy to say that with Photoshop Elements 9 that task becomes a lot easier. So let's just go and select both those images. So I've just made the thumbnails a little smaller and I've selected both of the photos. And I'm just going to open them up into the editor space. So I'll just right click on one of the selected photos and go down to edit with Photoshop elements. This will open those images into the main editor space. And remember you can always access your open images from the project bin at the bottom of the workspace as well. So this particular image you can see has the cross in the background sharp. The other image, if we flick over to it, has the foreground sharp. 
So in essence what we'd like to do is combine the sharpness of both these images together. So the first thing I'm going to do is just show both of the windows together. And I'm going to select the background and drag the background layer across to the image that has the cross sharp. Now if I hold down shift at this point before I let go of the mouse button then the two images will be layered up together. I'm now going to close the other photo because I don't need it anymore and I'm left with the one image with the two photos layered together. You'll see how there's a slight difference in the size of the actual railings. If we want to compare the size of those two railings we can select the upper layer and just go down to blend mode and select difference. And you can see that the upper layer now is com being compared with the lower layer. You can see that there's a slight difference there. And using the difference blend mode provides us with the ability to compare the two layers very simply and easily. We can then go up to image and down to transform and across to free transform and notice that we've got a quick shortcut key here, control T or command T if you're working on the Mac. Just select that and you'll see that we have handles sitting on the corners and the edges of our upper layer. This will give us the ability to change and adjust and resize the upper layer so that it's closer to the lower layer in terms of size. We want to get this so that it's looking like it's pretty close in terms of size. Now remember one will be out of focus or unsharp and the other will be sharp so you won't get it exact but it gives us the chance to try and line up at least the core details and we want to do that because of the next step in the process. Once you're happy with that we try and make the lines or the differences between the two images as little as possible. We can then go and click on the green tick at the bottom of the upper layer and it will apply that transformation. We can then go back to the layers panel and then just select normal and it will convert back to the normal layer. So now we have the two layers sitting one on top of the other around about the same size. And this is important because we want to actually remove part of the upper layer. In this case we want to remove the blurry cross in the background and replace it with the lower layer. Now we could go and grab the eraser tool and simply make that brush a little bit bigger. And we could erase the upper layer. And you'll see how we have the sharp cross from beneath coming through, combining the two together. But what that does is it destroys the detail in the upper layer completely. So a better way of working, and I'm just going to hold down control, the control button or the command button and hit the Z button in, or Z button in order to undo the last change that I've made to the image. In Photoshop Elements 9, the better way of working is to go down to the bottom of the layers panel and add a new layer mask. So adding a layer mask provides us the ability to get the same result but without deleting any of the upper layers information. So we'll then go over and select the brush. Make sure that black is set as our foreground color. And we've got the brush selected. We'll then go and select the actual layer mask itself and we can go ahead and brush over the image but remember what we're actually doing is painting black onto the layer mask and that will reveal the image beneath. So if we have a look at the layer mask you can see it over here we've got a black outline of the cross. So that black outline is actually hiding the detail from the upper layer and showing us the detail from the lower layer. So that way we're able to combine the sharpness of both the upper layer and the lower layer together.